Thank you all. Love you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you, all right, thank you. All right, I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Well, thank you. That was, this is a nice feeling, and thank you. I love you, and I appreciate it, so here we go. Hello, my name is Adam Sandler. <laughs> And I am the 2023 20, Mark Twain Humor Prize Award recipient for greatness in American funny and bringing the thunderous belly laugh to the sweet people of planet Earth. Can I get a hell yeah? Uh, <laughs> to all my amazing buddies who spoke earlier tonight, thank you from the deepest part of my heart. The whole time I was listening to you, I was filled with gratitude that the original people the Kennedy Center asked to come couldn't make it. <laughs> Nicholson, Hoffman, Pacino all had prior dinner reservations <laughs> <laughs> that they could not cancel. <laughs> and as you guys babbled on and on about me, I couldn't help but think the hell with ratings and talent. You guys are my real friends. <laughs> To my family, who all flew in from New Hampshire and Florida to watch me get this award, yes, I will pay for your hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta pay for your own incidentals, mother. <laughs> How many pistachios can one woman eat? <laughs> all right, I'm kidding, I love you. I'm gonna drop the voice and tell some, uh, try to speak normal. And, uh, <laughs> I feel bad. I've been making jokes about my mother, mother for many years, but she is a great lady, and uh, I'm sorry if any of them ever hurt your feelings, Mom, all right? So, honestly, I've had an amazing life. I'll tell you what kind of led me to this night. Um, I come from a great family, a sweet, beautiful, funny, incredible, caring, loving mother who played me, Barbara Streisand, Johnny Mathis. I had a, a, a as cool as it gets, badass, funny, ponytail dad who sang me Johnny Cash and Johnny Ray, and he showed me the Marx Brothers, Jerry Lewis, Jackie Gleason. Whenever they were on, he'd call me into the room. And growing up, my parents literally did everything they could to give me crazy confidence at literally everything I did. School, sports, singing, joking, they acted like I was the best <laughs> at all those things, even though other kids were way better than me. Um, my sisters, Elizabeth and Valerie, they included me in everything they did. They would always tell me to sing, tell stories. They'd go to all my games. They'd root for me. Uh, they'd even take me on dates with their boyfriends. Uh, <laughs> they just always made me feel like I was the star of the family. My older brother, Scott, I shared a bedroom with him my whole childhood. And he was always nice to me. He's always calm with me. And he would just tell me I, I'm funny all the time. He'd say I was great on the guitar, tell me I could sing as good as, as Steven Tyler. Uh, <laughs> he, would talk, he told me to read Mad Magazine, and we'd watch Benny Hill together. When it came time to pick my college major, so my brother was the one who said I should be an actor. I said, what, what, what should I do with my life? He said, you should be an actor. You're as funny as Rodney Dangerfield and uh, Eddie Murphy. And I, I never thought that but he sort of, he just made me feel like I was. He's the one who brought me to Boston when I was 17 years old. Uh, I was a senior in high school, and he brought me to do com a stand-up comedy at Stitches Comedy Club. He set it all up. Uh, he says, you're gonna get on stage for, you have five minutes to do jokes. What are you gonna say? I said, I'm not sure, I'll, I, I'll just wing it, because I really didn't even, I had no idea what the hell, I didn't even know you were supposed to prepare. So I went up there, I was, Terrible, I, didn't, I don't even know what I said. I was like in a fog, those weird fogs you get when you're a stand-up sometimes where you lose your mind. I just kind of was babbling. I remember one guy screaming out, he still has a retainer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> anyways, I left. For some reason on the way home, my brother made me feel like I had the best set of any comedian that night. And he was like, you just gotta prepare next time. But they loved you. And in my head, I was like, they, they did? But, uh, <laughs> And then I went to NYU. And first guy I meet was the great Tim Hurley. He, he was my roommate. And um, I, I asked him, what do you want to do with your life? He, he said, I want to be a billionaire. 
And I said, and he goes, how about you? I said, oh, I want to be a comedian. He said, cool. And then he asked me, uh, what are some of your jokes? And I said, I don't have any jokes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and then he went to Poughkeepsie to see his family, he came back, and he handed me uh, three yellow pieces of paper with, with jokes on them. And he, he just did it on his own, gave me these jokes. That's when we, we like, became a team and started trying to kick ass together. And all my buddies, uh, my buddy Eric Lamansoff, who I grew up with, and the guys from my dorm, Jack Garaputo, Frank Karachi, Alan Colbert, who I met in my history comedy class, we just all got very tight with each other, and comedy just, that became our uh, obsession. And Colin Quinn, who was a great comedian, and I was, he, he used to uh, host a show at a place called The Paper Moon in Greenwich Village, and they used to book me all the time. And it, was, it wasn't due to my talent, but they knew when I showed up, so did at least 30 NYU students from my dorm. So they were like, <laughs> let's hire that guy. But I, I, I really, I had no idea I was being used because, again, the confidence thing made me think, wow, <laughs> these, these Greenwich Village comedy clubs, they get it, I'm gonna be a sensation. Uh, <laughs> then I graduated college. Bud Friedman, he saw me at uh, Catch a Rising Star. He told me I should move out to LA and he said he would put me up at the improv. I told my dad, should I go out there? Should I move out there? He said, well, if Bud Friedman he said you should come out, you gotta go out there. That guy knows what he's talking about. So the next thing I know, I'm living uh, with Judd Apatow. We were writing away, laughing all the time, had the best time together. Dennis Miller saw me, told Lorne Michaels about me. Um, then with the help of my manager, Sandy Wernick, nudging uh, Lauren, they hired me. I ended up on SNL with all my buddies. Uh, every one of these, my castmates became my best friends. We all had each other's backs immediately. Lots of, lots of the castmates and lots of the writers I got to know seemed to have that same kind of confidence about themselves I had, some like a weird comedy confidence that we thought we knew what was funny and the world needed to see it. Me and Hurley, he started uh, writing uh, Billy Madison over the facts. Then Bob Simons, who produced Airheads, he, he read the script. He said, you really want to make that movie? I can get it done for you. We were like, yeah, absolutely. And Bob did that for us. And then we really started getting cooking. We just we started writing all our stuff and producing and directing and editing. And we were very hands-on. And it became like an addiction. And uh, we, we knew the movies we worshiped growing up and quoted growing up, and we kind of wanted to attempt to do stuff like that for the next generation. And having a kid come up to you and say they liked the line from your movie or one of the comedy albums or something like that, that literally was the best feeling I could ever get. Until, until one night, and that night was, will always be the, my favorite night of my life. So Stephen Dorff was having a birthday party. <laughs> And my agent and buddy Adam Bennett said to me, let's go. I go, I sit at a table, my buddy Dallas introduces me to that woman over there. And from, from that moment on, I, I just couldn't keep my eyes off her. She was sweet, she was gorgeous, as nice as it gets. And as luck would have it, she also had the habit of telling me I was great at everything. <laughs> <laughs> Now uh, my jokes were great, and my, she said I have good hair, said I, my cheeks smell good. Uh, everything I did in her eyes, I was the best. Uh, that's that's at, at least how she made me feel. Then, thank you, thank you. Um, and then, uh, along came two of the true best things, baby showing up, Sadie and Sonny. And they the love of our lives. The most pride and joy that Jackie and I could ever feel, the life changers. When they speak, we either laugh, tear up, or just stare at them in amazement. Every conversation we have, every day, every night, every drive, every meal, every smile, every hang we have, I'm only wishing the time will stand still, because being with you two and mommy, that's the best life can get. And they look like their mama, and they're smart like their mama, and they also give me confidence every year on my birthday, too, by buying me T-shirts that say, world's best farter. Uh, and I don't even f***ing fart that much, but they think it's fun. So, anyways, in summary, my career's been tremendous. I, 
Nothing has let me down. I do work my ass off. It's fun. I wake up early. It's fun. I stay up late. It's fun. I go on locations. If I bring the family, it's fun. Every one in this room tonight has made my life fun. People always would ask me, those bad reviews you get, how does that make you feel? Make you feel like shit? And I'd say, <laughs> no, nah, it really doesn't. I, I think the reason I, I get to say it, that didn't hurt me is because so many of you guys in this room made me feel great about what, what we've done together. And all my fellow comedians, actors, writers, collaborators, crew members, people on the streets, my family, my kids, my forever girl, Jackie, all make me feel like the critics didn't know what, they, what the hell they were talking about. So thank you for all that. Thank you. Thank you for creating a delusional, psychotic man who is now the proud owner of the 2023 Mark Twain Award for Athleticism, <laughs> Math, Sexual Prowess, Guitar Virtuosity, and Best Cheek Smell. Good night. Keep lying to yourselves, everybody. And God bless America. Thank you so much for that. Love you all. Thank you, thank you.